Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thousand One Games. I'm your host, Gaming J, and today we're gliding into the world of Final Fantasy XII, which I have heard stands for 12. This is obviously a series that needs no introduction. I mean, the Final Fantasy games have just been around forever. That looks like Naboo, actually. That, that, that looked like the, I was getting like prequel, Star Wars prequel vibes, like the celebration at the end of uh, Phantom Menace there. Um, Final Fantasy has been around forever. The big one, interestingly enough, Final Fantasy, I always remember as a kid, it was always around, but I remember when Final Fantasy VII came out, that was like the thing. Like, I, I, I never even played any of the Final Fantasy games growing up, but I remember... That dude with the yellow spiky hair and the giant sword. I remember that. Because uh, it was just sort of everywhere. Like, everyone loved Final Fantasy for a hot second. Um, other people don't still love the, the series, but it's like even people who didn't play it knew about it. And it's interesting that it took seven games before it hit that, like, sort of, like, cultural epic moment. I don't know why seven was so popular. I guess, was it the first one for PlayStation Square Enix used to release for Nintendo, like Super Nintendo and stuff, the old Final Fantasies, and they moved. So I don't know why 7 was so epic. Maybe someone who follows the franchise can let me know, but it was the one. And then it's sort of like Final Fantasies have kept coming out since 7. Like, they got on to 12. I'm sure they're on Final Fantasy, like, 27 now, because, like, they're not stopping. Uh, you know, they're not stopping. They're going to keep doing these. Um, so I don't even know where they are in terms of the series anymore. Um, but I feel like it's, it, 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 you know, they haven't hit that high mark of seven again. Like, again, people who like Final Fantasy, still loving it, still playing it. They're good selling games, high quality games. But seven sort of briefly became like a cultural thing. And I've never really known why. Anyway, we're playing 12 today. Let's go ahead and give it a shot. Let's see what the world of 2006 looked like in video game land. Um, okay, here we go. Here are our options. Screen shaking. I, I'll leave that off so it doesn't screw up my video recording. Normal size. What happens if I go to widescreen? Oh, it distorts the... Okay, I'm going to leave it as normal size. Flicker filter. Interesting. What is Pro Logic 2? I've... Literally, I've heard of stereo and mono, also monaural. I've never heard it said that way, but what the hell is pro? It, it's like a new kind of sound. It's not stereo or mono. It like defies the logic of uh, of quantity. I don't know. Anyway, whatever. I don't know why I'm messing with screen settings. <laughs> Normally, they give you like easy, hard, number of lives. This one is like, w which sound system do you want to use? Just sort of an interesting startup. Uh, menu that we had going on there. Well, these are birds. So I know Final Fantasy VII, you played Cloud. Um, I'm pretty sure that was the guy's name with the giant sword. The aesthetics of this are actually very cool. Sort of like a medieval town with flying ships. I mean, there's like big monsters walking around there too. It looks like Ganon's race, you know, from uh, Legend of Zelda. Oh my god, that looked like Jar Jar right there. There's Jar Jar's- it totally is the Phantom Menace. Oh, also Hot Bunny Ladies? Hello. Oh, interesting world. I would like to visit this world. Look, there's like literal just rabbits hanging around. Uh, here on uh, Naboo, they just got word that the Emperor has been defeated. Also, these people are there. This is Tim. And... Lisa. They're driving to the supermarket. And people are happy about it. They're young. And that is an epic supermarket, let me tell you. They have a wide selection of meats. Also, they're getting married. I don't know why I'd get married in the supermarket. 
All right, there's an option to skip this, whatever. You know, it's not like watching this cutscene would have made me less confused about what's going on. I probably would have been just as confused. Um, because, since I've never followed any of the Final Fantasy games, they're like, so-and-so is marrying so-and-so, uniting their kingdoms. I'm like, oh, great. Are those king Was that significant? Like, the context would be totally lost on me. You there. Can you hear me? Hopefully they'll put a sword in our hand and we'll be able to start slicing and dicing some baddies real soon. Skip this too. I don't know. I'm a dude who's dying. You know, we'll construct our own backstory. I think that's a more fun way to play video games. Just appear places, fighting things, and try and figure out what's going on. I mean, that's how they did it in the old days. When you were Super Mario and you encountered Goombas and Turtles, did you question why you had to jump on them and... You know, basically curb stomp them to death. No, he just did it. He didn't worry about a story. You must always be mindful of your surroundings. Use the right analog stick to look around. Epic instructions. Whoa. Oh, God, it's reversed. Is there a way to reverse? Use the left analog stick to move. This is like in the early era of gaming. I don't think nowadays a tutorial would tell you how to use the dual analog sticks. They would just assume you got that one under your belt. Um, do you see the marker above my head? That's a talk icon. You can talk to any character with one of these. Okay, well, I don't want to talk to you because you're an idiot. Talk to this guy. I like how we're wearing armor that reveals our midriff. I mean, truthfully, you know, they put uh, female, hot female characters in armor that reveals their midriff so much. So why don't the dudes wear it too? Like, look, we're are, we're in undies and midriff revealing armor. I say, why not? It's it's the boys' turn to dress this way into combat. Let's do it, boys. Let's go get some action with our tummies exposed. <laughs> like, look at this armor. Oh wait, am I a female? I can't tell. I'm either the fe uh, a female or the boy, uh, a man with the body of a 12-year-old boy. Either way, it's fine. Um, I want to see if there's a way to mess with the options. Uh, I want to close this. There is not. I can quit back to the title and go back. The second, the sort of fact that the right analog stick is reversed is really screwing me up. Like when you press left, you go right. When you press right... No, wait, left goes left and right goes right, but up. I don't know how to describe it, but it's reversed. I swear it is. Just go through this game. I'm not really paying attention to what anyone is saying. But I figured it out. Turns out all that dialogue is completely superfluous. It's window dressing. All you gotta do is go click on the gate. And then you see an epic load screen of just blackness and then you get more dialogue probably should be reading this <laughs> now let's kill this guy that red line is a hostile target take heed you're being targeted when a foe targets you the red line uh the line is red when you target a, a foe the line is blue if you see a red line look for foes at once they're not readily apparent use the right analog stick to look around once you select an attack on a targeted foe, choose your distance. Uh, close your distance, and you'll automatically attack. Okay, so this is a little different from the other Final Fantasies. Interesting. They've modernized it. Here, her point falls. Press X and select item. Okay. All right, so I want to... Magics and Technics. I want to attack this guy. Then I just go near him, right? Ah, that was easy. So it's sort of retained some of the classic Final Fantasy, like, you know, selecting your attacks and stuff, but it seems to be more action based because you actually get to move around during combat. So I'm curious to see where this goes. Like, can I dodge attacks and stuff? We shall see. You know, he's the captain because he's earned the right to wear armor on his tummy. Everyone else must fight with exposed bellies. We're both guards and weekend workers at Chippendales. Okay, attack. You attack the air cutter. Go get it, dude. 
he doing it? Doing anything? Yeah, he is. So if I dodge this thing... Oh, so you can sort of, like, dodge, and then when you're ready... I don't know how to tell... Oh, my attack bar is building. You ready? Oh, if you are standing too far back and your attack is ready, you will miss. Interesting. So you can sort of, like, time... Or did I hit there? I can't tell. If I stand back here... Oh, so you just wait for your attack bar to build up. Then you run over and stab it. Interesting. Probably look at this thing that we're fighting against. Oh god, it's doing some crazy attack. That is also a crazy robot that we're just killing with swords. Like, we don't have any more advanced weapons. Oh, he's Hadoukening it. Hadouken! Eat it, robot! That is a cool looking robot, I'll tell you. There, there's like some sort of dialogue going on as if there's a pilot in there. Okay, I thought we were fighting like some kind of robot AI, but was there a dude in there? Anyone know? I feel like maybe there was a dude in there. Attack this guy. So we're gonna hang back. And then stab him. Oh, he blocked it. Hang back. Stab him. We're the guy in combat who just st stands back and hopes nobody stabs him. Let other people take the brunt of the attacks. Why would I? Why would I stand near an enemy when you guys are totally willing to take that hit? There's no simple way through the fortress. The mini-map in the top right corner of your screen may not be enough to gain your bearings. Should you lose your way, consult your location map by pressing select. It is... The ancient secret of select. Show you a wider view of the battle. Now we wait. I guess the load times aren't too bad. It's interesting they don't even bother to give you a load screen of any kind. Even like a little rotating icon in the bottom right corner of the screen would uh would be sufficient. Anyway, who cares what these people have to say to each other? We're here for the gameplay, man. We're here for the gameplay. Bunch of irate Chippendale employees coming for vengeance. Get him. Oh, he's dead. Oh. You guys can kill him? Okay. Well, I was sort of... I, should I even target this guy? Like... And you guys are killing everybody. Oh, there's the- oh my god, okay. We finally- we should actually target somebody. Ah, oh, you bastard. Stand back, and attack. Alright, you guys got him. It is an interesting attack system, I will say that. Is there a way to dodge? Just try the trigger. What is that? Oh, if you hold the right trigger, it says fleeing. <laughs> oh wait, that was. We actually have an inventory now. Battle mode. What is this? In active mode, time flows during the battle command. Oh, that's harder. So we pause the game when we need to select our ac actions and active it just goes. That's for hardcore players. Um, huh, there's no option to reverse the right analog stick. How annoying. Uh, let's attack this guy. Imperial Swordsman G. Everybody gets a letter, and we stand back so he doesn't attack us back. Oh, you dick! Yeah, it's sort of like an interesting mix of a turn-based combat system with an action system. I guess the thing for me is that if it's, if a game's gonna get this action-y, like, I would like the opportunity to personally swing the sword and to be able to dodge attacks. Basically like Diablo. Like, this is so close to Diablo. 
Except that once you select attack, your guy just stands there until he feels like attacking. Like think, uh, like I understand it's a game mechanic, but and think, look, look at what's actually happening in the battle. All these guys are just standing next to a guy, and they're all just thinking about attacking. And then a certain point hits, and they're like, "All right, let's do it." And then they stand there and they wait, you know. But then, like Diablo, as fast as you can click, your guy can swing. Um, or like, you know, in a first-person shooter, as fast as you can pull the trigger, your guy can shoot. So it's sort of, it, it's just sort of almost feels like you should be able to attack faster or something, you know? You just can't. Like, my guy's just spending most of his time standing next to enemies. Again, I understand it works in an RPG setting and stuff, but feels a little weird. How many of these guards are there, by the way? I guess we should look at our overhead map. That's what they told us we should be doing. Okay, let's go to the map here. Okay, so we just want to go north. Which is this way? Let's just go, boys. We'll figure it out. Go up the stairs here, I guess. I gotta say, though, I do prefer this sort of pace of action compared to traditional Final Fantasy games. Um, I guess we want to go up further. This is a save crystal. Okay, thanks. I get it. We'll save. Save. Um, not that I dislike the Final Fantasy combat system. I think it's fine. It's, uh, oops. I think what I've learned about myself is I prefer more, um, action packed, uh, games typically. Although, I don't know. It's weird. Like, I like Diablo, and then I like, like, games where you're literally, you know, like, like Remnant, or The Division, or Halo, or whatever, where you're, like, pulling the trigger. And you can have heavy RPG elements, like The Division or something, um, or Destiny. But I like to actually be pulling the trigger for my character, you know? Because it, it's... When you're in actual control of your character, it's like, if you are a good first-person shooter player then you can dodge attacks, you can headshot enemies. You know, in this mode, like, I'm just relying on a statistic. You know, what is the probability of headshotting an enemy? And my guy's going to do the attack himself. So I like a game where your own personal skill can come into play a little bit more. And Diablo is a little like that. It's sort of somewhere in between because, like, you can't swing the actual sword and you know, actually do a better job of attacking. Your character's still the one doing the attacking, but you can sort of click and move and dodge, so there's sort of a half measure in there. Um, okay, I don't know where I'm supposed to be going here. Passage door, let's do it. But, like, that said, like, I'm, I'm just thinking, like, there are turn-based RPGs I do like. And one of the, the things about RPGs I think that's really fun is sort of the statistics of it. Sounds kind of weird to say, but sort of like, you know, getting better numbers and better stats and the balances and the builds. My God, the builds. In every great RPG, there are so many ways to customize and build and create the ultimate character. And I think that's the fun part. And that's why like a game like... Like, I don't know if you guys have ever played Remnant from the Ashes, but it's basically like a first-person shooter that's very Dark Souls-y, um, but it has tons of, like, combos and builds and armors and items and weapons. They all interact with each other, and you can create crazy builds. Like, you can create ones that do all sorts of, like, crazy bird damage or elemental. You can be, like, a tank. You can be a glass cannon. You can be a sniper, an up-close fighter. You can be a melee fighter. It's very interesting. Um, and the builds in that game really... Like, I went through a real remnant phase for a while there. Um, a couple years ago, actually. Um, and recently I've been craving playing it again, but... One of those things where once you play it through, like, what else is there to do? Why? Anyway, I think the captain be betrayed the king or something like that. The king intended all along to sell Damasca to the Empire. His majesty was a traitor. Oh, he just betrayed me, too. <laughs> I've been stabbed. 
All right, so this is the bad guy. <laughs> All right, whatever. Anyway, uh, yeah, great RPGs. The fun, the fun thing I've always found fun is balancing those stats and like starting with a character with like ten hit points, getting up to 20, 25, and like when you level up, balancing the traits. And, I don't know. I think that's why I always like the Fallout series. They did that very, very well. Um. I'm trying to think of what other turn-based RPGs I really enjoy personally. Yeah, I'm, it, it'll come to me later. You know, once this video is recorded and uploaded, then I'll think of all sorts of different turn-based RPGs I love. But yeah, it's interesting how like RPG systems have sort of um, they've they've sort of found their way into almost every other game genre, especially like first-person shooters or third-person shooters, like. Everything seems to have an RPG mechanic these days. It's almost as common as having like uh, loot boxes or unlocks. Oh god, unlocks. That is one thing that I do not miss when I play these older style games. You know, like every gaming era has its own things going on. And, uh, you know, in these in this PS2 era, you know, like the early 2000s and stuff, there weren't many unlocks you had to, to unlock in any given game. You know, when you got a game, you pretty much had everything. But it's like at some point, developers realized, hey, if you make people have to earn points to unlock other things in their game, they will grind through and replay the same game over and over and over again. And then they will unlock stuff, you know. So it's like, I remember, I think it was Halo Reach might have been the first game that I personally played where I noticed that. But then there's games like Uncharted and pretty much everything now has like unlocks. You know, you can't just beat the game anymore. You have to like do all sorts of other crazy things to unlock stuff. And I, I have a mixed feeling about that. I don't, I kind of like unlocking things like there is obviously That's some joy in unlocking things but at the same time it's sort of like uh, you know I don't want it to be a grind so if the developers find the right balance of effort for reward unlocks can be great but if they don't it can be effing horrible uh, like case in point Uncharted 4 I think it is my friends and I have played that off and on for years and there are literally thousands of things in that game that I don't have unlocked. And we did the math. It would cost like $10,000 or something to buy it from the store. It's obviously a ploy to make you spend money. Uh, meanwhile, again, going back to Remnant, because it is a terrific game if you guys have never heard of it. Um, that game, you do have to grind a little and you have to unlock some stuff. But the unlocks are quite reasonable. Um, and then if I can throw one more game in by example, you know, Destiny also had a grind and unlocks, but its grind was way more intense than uh, Remnant. So Remnant is kind of like my gold standard of, yes, it has unlocks. Yes, there's a little bit of a grind, but it's a reasonable amount of grind anyway. Um, we were just killing rats for some reason. Yes, we started a new life as a Ninja Turtle. Now we're up in the market and they see the guards are not being nice to people. Also, there's all sorts of crazy monsters walking around, which I think is totally cool. The sort of setting and the scenes and the, the imagination in this game, I'm all down with. Again, I want to visit this world. Not like, you know, as a theme park or something, but if there were a way to actually be in this world. Just for a day. What? I don't, don't want to permanently go there, but... Um... All right. Hey, She's either my sister or a hot girl who's into me. <laughs> One or the other. <laughs> She'll probably figure it out before we have a Luke and Leia style kiss, though. Um, I presume she's my sister because she cares so much about me. It seems from the like two seconds of cutscenes I watched. Your location map often bears a mark showing your destination. Consult a map when you're unsure of where to go next. I appreciate that. So we seem to be in a market with many vendors and options. World map has been added to the party menu. All right, so these crazy critters. Ha ha ha! He just heard a good joke. Evil guard over here. Uh. Well, that was weird. Suddenly, I just couldn't move for a second. I don't know if the game was loading or my controller stalled or something. 
Wow, this is a very cool looking city. I'm just like taking it all in. Like there's palm trees, the architecture, the creatures. Something just clicked. Talk to this guy. I was just down at Migalo's Sundries. That Migalo's coming and going. Uh, so I'm half afraid he's going to wear the doors off its hinges. Random. You know what I would like to see on YouTube is somebody who walks around a uh, busy street like this in a real city and talks to random people the same way RPG characters talk to people and see what real people say. Because nobody, nobody is as friendly in real life and as open and as willing to share as random RPG characters in a video game. <laughs> You walk up to a random RPG character, they've never seen you before, and they're like, I just finished buying some steaks at the grocery store. Gotta get home to my little one. It's getting late out. You, t you, you walk up to a real person and say hello, and they're like, you know, halfway between running and calling the cops right away. Like, you, you have to identify why you're talking to them within a couple seconds or you're in trouble. And like, I don't blame people. I mean, like if a weirdo ran up to me, I would, I would be instantly skeptical. Instantly. They're either trying to sell you something or who knows what. Let's just go into a building. I, sh I should go see Miguelo first. Um, yeah, I, I know uh, in Toronto, they have um, attractive young people. This is not a joke. They have attractive young people stand on street corners and when you walk by, they try and say a compliment to you. They're like, hey, I really like your shirt. Or like, oh my God, where did you get those shoes? And as soon as you say anything back to them, they say, let me tell you about the environment or let me tell you about, you know, taxes or, or whatever. It's a total ploy to get you just to put your defenses down for two seconds. And then it instantly goes into some kind of sales pitch and they want donations. Um, and I'm all for donating to charities and stuff. I think there's a lot of good causes we should be donating to. But I hate that that sort of undercover spam. And then also, if you try and, like, I, I've gotten it tons of times. And they're like, hey, nice shirt. And you're like, oh, thank you. And they're like, oh, let me ask you this, blah, blah, blah. And I always just say, sorry, I don't have time. And keep walking. They're like, oh, come on. And they kind of try and make you feel bad because you don't want to talk to them. Uh, but I don't know. I guess I'm a dick. I just keep walking. Uh, but the RPG characters talking to randos kind of reminds me of that. Anyway, he's telling me about shops. We'll figure it out. I, you know what? Sometimes when I play these games, I do kind of want to hear from the characters and stuff, but I don't know what, today I'm just sort of like, eh, 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 <laughs> whatever. I'm sure we can figure this out. Is there a place we got to go? See, look, the, the mini maps tell us exactly where we got to go. Don't worry about it. We'll figure it out. We're just having fun here today, guys. You know, I think also in my mind, I've sort of resigned to the fact that like, there's no way I'm playing through a significant portion of this game. Um, you know, I've said this so many times, but in our little thousand and one quest, we are just trying these thousand and one games, seeing what they're like, exploring them, having fun getting a feel for them. And I think sometimes when people watch my videos, they're like, oh man, he's gonna play through this game. And then I play it for like an hour and they're like, man, you didn't even get very far and stuff. And it's like, you know, for these giant games, I think I've just accepted the fact that we're just here as a tourist just to like see what's going on, you know? Um, and I'm less concerned today about how far we get and more just sort of like hanging out, chatting, enjoying the game, enjoying what, what we are able to see. There's a thing with a little fluffy hat on there. That is weird. Uh, Migalos Sundries. Should we buy a sundress, guys? Oh, I guess sundries means post. I don't know why I thought sundress. Sundries. Eye drops. Blind removes blind. Well, I hope I don't get blinded. Oh, man, yeah, look at this store. You know what I am so excited for in my lifetime, guys? And I hope it comes before I die. <laughs> And it's not playing a thousand and one games. I'll do that before I die, I'm sure. Oh, God. Hopefully I don't die in some horrific car accident in the next, like, year or something. Oh, we're getting really dark here. You know what happens before I die is I hope they make VR so good 
that you can put on an Oculus 11 and it is basically photorealistic and they you put on like an Oculus sensory hand glove and inner ear implant so that they can simulate motion by messing with the liquids in your ears and I hope you can walk around a place like this this is the kind of just place I would like to just walk around and explore you know I was literally in Best Buy the other day and because of the pandemic and everything like like everyone I you know barely went out over the last few years um, I was in Best Buy the other day just for no reason I had no reason to be there nothing I needed to buy I wandered around the electronic well I was there for a reason I needed a, uh, a USB cord but I got the USB cord and I could have just left but I was like eh I've been thinking about getting a new toaster, so I walked by the toaster section. Nothing fit my fancy, so I was like, yeah, I'll just look at the fridges for some reason. I walked through, like, the TV area. I was just walking around seeing what was there. This sounds so lame. <laughs> this sounds so lame. But I literally yeah, felt guys. like Stop I was, like, I could feel on the inside I was enjoying look. just looking, just being this out in a place looking. I sound like like I'm a little hermit guys I do get out of the house but I don't know why I just I hadn't been in Best Buy for a really long time it was just fun to look at everything and playing this game now I'm just thinking like how fun would it be to like just have it's not even a game it's just you just go and you walk through Final Fantasy 12 town and you just get to like go to the bar and have a drink you know walk by some random monsters that are chopping for sundries maybe buy a sundress and a nice hat to go with it you know photorealistic VR and the feeling like you're actually walking around. And there, cause there's two things I want to do before I die with that VR system. And neither of them <laughs> is dirty. Get your minds out of the gutter. One is walk around a final fantasy 12 town like this. And the other is walk around the eighties and or nineties. Somebody is going to do it. I swear to God, once VR hits a certain point, somebody's literally going to create like, you know, New York City, 1988, and you just walk around and you see like stores and you see like they have NESs for sale and like, you know, Ronald Reagan's on the TV and you walk through a mall and just, there's just, there's nothing to do. It's just walk around in the summer of 1987, the summer of 1993, the summer of 1994. That's all I want. It's because I know time travel doesn't really exist. Well, you know. It's not going to exist in my lifetime. Who knows about the future, you know, the physics of it or anything. I know you can travel into the, the future by just going near the speed of light. Getting to the past is trickier. But they're never going to figure out a way to go back to the 80s and 90s. But you can simulate it, Matrix style. So that's what I'm thinking would be cool. Um, anyway, we got, a, we got an amulet. So that's a thing. You guys might be paying closer attention to the story than me. You can quickly acquire a new license anytime you like from the party menu. Decide whose licenses you want to examine. I have a license? I don't see anyone else here, so it looks like that means you, Van. What is this license? This is a license clipboard. The license board shows which licenses you already have, as well as some new ones waiting to be obtained. Marked with a star. Oh, so I have a license to steal. <laughs> okay. I'm not doing, I'm not moving by the way. I have a license to wear a leather cap and leather clothing and a mithril sword. Right, you can equip leather. This is sort of some interesting two dimensional skill system it looks like. That's cool. We've seen a variety of skill systems over the years. It's kind of interesting to see uh, different ways that they figure to uh, uh, implement these different systems. Um, okay, so this is saying a license alone is enough. A Mithril Blade was dark, and that's because you don't have an... Oh, you need a license and a thing, and then you can do it need to buy magics from magic shop and arms from a smithy we're able to put those licenses to use doesn't matter which one you get magics and equipment you can use any magics and techniques in your position i can't even talk right now it's because everything's spelled around magics and techniques in your position as soon as you acquire the necessary license we'll have to equip weapons and armor 
I only half followed it, dude, but I'm sure it'll be fine. This is a giant board. <laughs> I imagine by the end of it, you have just like a huge swath of abilities. Kind of interesting. Yeah, I can't tell if it's interesting and cool or if it's just an overly elaborate and annoying system to work with, but anyway, those are our abilities. Select this license and press X, then you can accessorize. Okay. Use a directional. Okay. Oops. Obtain the accessory. Oh, we did it! Now. Okay. Different accessories. An arm guard and a, a bangle. And a blindna. There we go. You don't have enough license points to obtain any more. All right, we are li a licensed and bonded RPG character. All right, here's all of the actions he can perform. Nothing, 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 and nothing. Oh, he can steal from one foe. Good to know. I like how they put that on the last screen. Like, why not put that front and foremost, but whatever. I'd say you're ready to hunt that mark for me. Oh, you'll be needing to leave the city. Just show... The watch gate. I wasn't paying attention, but I think we were being hired as a mercenary. A writ of transit. Very legally bound society. Rogue tomato. They sort of, you need like a writ to leave. You need like, uh, you know, uh, licenses and, and binding in order to even use. In order to steal, you need to be licensed. How, how's that for a society? You're licensed to steal from one foe at a time, sir. Look at this cool bar. Honestly, the the environments. I'm not joking. I, I really do find this like quite detailed and interesting. It's like not not only the detail because like you know PS3, PS4, PS5, uh, you know Xbox One and stuff. They have games that are more detailed than this. But I guess it's goes to show that it's like the creativity like look at these creatures and these monsters and stuff and they're all having conversations like the creativity and the style almost can like make a game stand out even more but see what this guy has to say he's just like hanging out naked in a bar I hear there's a mark on the east ester sands in the ester sand of course the imperials are too busy securing the city to worry about trouble beyond the walls well, you see, that's where I come in. Hey, let's pick up this girl, barkeep. What are you doing after work? Have you seen how many guards they've stationed in the southern plaza? I have not. Nor do I care. It's not my problem. All right, we got to go hunt a tomato or something. I thought my guy was going to be mostly involved in potato-based policing, but I guess there's always room for a tomato. We gotta go south. Personally, I'm very torn about the, uh, you know, logistics of policing fruit, but... Or vegetables, I should say, fruit. What am I talking about? I'm totally pro-fruit. I, fr I mean, fruit should be free, man. It's, but the uh, policing of vegetables, I mean, I think it's a necessary thing. Even though I have some mixed feelings about it. This way, sort of. Where am I going? This mini map is like hard to use because it's not rotating with me, and the screwy camera controls are, are like just making it a little difficult. I wish the I wish my guy was always facing north on the mini map. The mini map just rotated around me. That would actually help me out a heck of a lot. Uh, I want to go left and back. Left, back. There we go. All right, boys. I have a writ pipers, allowing me no to leave. It's like palm trees in the background, blue sky. Maybe I'm just start for like California right now. It's like I just really want to go go to a beach somewhere. But also this like magnificent, opulent city. Let's look at it. Yeah, the camera is, is rotating around on me. Hold on. I want to see the city as I walk away from it. 
Okay, I can't get a better view of it. But suffice to say, it is a, a desert paradise, guys. That city blew me away. I want to go to there. Now we have to load the desert. Oh, that's cool. I, I was just lit. Oh my god! A, a, a T-Rex! I was literally just gonna imagine like plain sand hills, boring desert, but instantly the game gives me a visual treat. Oh my god, there's little uh, cactus guys to slaughter. Oh, he's not bad. Who's this guy? He's just a cat. He's, he's the cutest cactus you've ever seen. Wow. Look, there's a... That is a, also an awesome looking like wolf or something. The, the detail in these characters, in like even the armor that my guy wears on his pants, everything. Oh man, that is a cool looking wolf too. It's, it's like wearing a skull or something, or that is its skull. Hey, there's that tomato. That was easy. Slaughter this wildlife here. I guess let's just go get the tomato. Hello, I'm here to... Oh my god. Rogue tomato. See if we can dodge its attack. No. So really, there there is no dodging. You just stand there and take every attack, it seems. Maybe there was a way to dodge. I guess you just stand there. I mean, in a normal RPG, you can't just press a button to dodge attacks. In Mario RPG, you can, actually. But... Okay, there. Wait. Son of a bitch! I'll get you, tomato! I'm just, like, shaking my fist at it. Okay. Also, when you press start, I feel like it should bring up your menu. It's weird that it does not. Going here. Let's heal up a little. E item. Use a potion. How do I use it? For a small amount. Change the order. Okay, hold on. Maybe I just... Oops. Items. There we go. Glug, glug, glug. Alright, I'm ready to slaughter this tomato. He pissed me off something awful. Look at the even the desert. Okay, hold on. Mountains and stuff. Wow. There's like even like gusts of uh, sand and stuff going on. I dig. Oh my God, that giant T-Rex is in the background. That is a little scary. Oh, he still got me. Here, what if I stand like really far back from him? There we go. Then we stand really far back. We're ready. Yeah, maybe you, you just have to go like... No, he still got me. You have to go like really far back. Ow. We got you, tomato boy. You're coming with me. Rogue tomato vanquished. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm an epic hero. I have killed a beefsteak. And I, I've also spotted a flower. My leg armor literally looks like I'm a mech or something like that. Is Never some I'd see him growing interesting out here. looking armor. Anyway, skip. We don't we don't got time for this. Obtained a handful of Galbana lilies. We killed a tomato and got some lilies. We're the most badass adventure ever. I want to see what this tent is over here. Trying to avoid these wolves so I don't get into too many fights. Wolf G. Ready's Lun. Look at this! A little village or something. Wait, how do I get down there? Or can I even? Um. Yeah, there's a way around here. Trees in the desert? Was not expecting that either. Appreciate it. Let's see what we got going on over here. Little desert village. Hello. Oh, people are just fading in. 
Uh, this is just a nameless outpost on the road between Rabinaster and Nalbini. Whichever you're headed for, you're not far to go. This is a Chocobo or something, isn't it? I'm pretty sure that's one of the staples of Final Fantasy. I think the games are mostly disconnected and unrelated, but there's a couple sort of threads throughout them. The girl's wearing jeans. What up? Desert Wayfarer. My father said he didn't mind paying, but maybe I ought to pitch in a little too. Chocobos don't come cheap. With all these delays, I hope I can afford it. Alright. What's up? Hi, my name's Dantro. I'm on watch here. <laughs> You're doing a terrible job. I just literally wandered in the camp and no one confronted me. What if I wanted to put you to sword, man? Could have slaughtered you in your sleep and nobody would have known. Nobody would know. Hey, this person has a little wolf dog. What's up, little boy? A boy and his dog? A boy and his dot 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 dog? You stuck here too? I came to the village up ahead. Now I can't get back. Hmm, don't worry about him. He won't bite or nothing. He's practically family. Cute, huh? Well, now I feel bad for killing that random dog. Is somebody over here? <laughs> I saw the speech bubble on the Chocobo's butt and was like, am I supposed to talk to the butthole? <laughs> oh, there's a person over here. Um, I hired a chocobo, but for what? They've got a whole blasted desert blocked off. What, really? I just walk through. No one's allowed through unless they're on official business. Less wise not to the Lord Consul's appointment. Okay. Well, let's go back and finish this tomato thing and see what the next quest is, but truthfully, I don't think we're going to get too much farther in this one here today, but... Let, let's see where this tomato thing leads. I mean, we've come this far. I kind of want to know what's up with the tomato. Why did we kill it? What was going on? Why are there cute cactuses everywhere? You know. The basic questions one would have in a situation like this. Also, maybe I won't kill any more dogs. But they are dogs, right? Or wolves or whatever they are. We'll leave them in peace. We're going to hold the fleeing button. No! All right, dog, I'll kill you. Let's do it. Ha! Ow, he bit my bum. Hold on. Heal myself. Attack the dog. Those are vicious looking dogs. Like, their faces do kind of look like demons. Run, 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 run. And attack. Can't tell if that actually is a good way to fight or not. Obtained a windstone. There's our epic village town that we're going to. Did I, by the way, gather the tomatoes corpse? I don't recall. I guess it was uh, dealt with in the cutscene that I skipped. There's a diamond guy over here. Oh, there's a save diamond. Save crystal. In Remnant from the Ashes, you also save with the save crystal. Again. Just saying. Oh, God. Yeah, if you guys have not checked out that game... It is a first-person shooter, but it's very Dark Souls-y, so it's like, if you do start to play it, you pr will probably die a lot. Don't worry. It gets... It, it hang in there, it gets good. Um, and yeah, it's sort of very, like, um... Monster-y. Wait, how do I... How do I actually get in here? They wouldn't let me through. Nothing to do now, but wait until the ceremony's over. Wait. How do I back in oh wait there's nothing to do here wait what okay hold on yeah the, the the tomato thing was just a giant ruse to kick me out of the city that's how they get rid of their homeless in uh, whatever city i came from they're like oh go out of town and hunt a giant tomato we'll give you 50 bucks and then you go outside and then they never let you back in and you can't and the wor worst part is you can't even find the tomato 
They just straight up lied about the tomato too. Um, no, it wants me to go back. Okay, let's try one more time, see if we can get into the city here. Um, okay, checking our map. I'm so confused. It was like, come to the city, but there, by the way, there's nothing here for you. It's absolutely empty and the gates are locked. This person says. I just don't see why they won't let me through. I'm a citizen. Same as anyone else, aren't I? Let's talk to all these people. Uh, that guy's an adventurer. I kind of want to adventure with him. Uh, so just, they're finishing the inspection. But what do I see? The gates closed before my very eyes. A wee bit dodgy, wouldn't you say? Something is up, man. Ah, Van, I guess I'm not the only one who's locked out of the city. I told Pinoli to come about the mark you were going after, and I guess I got her worrying, so the two of us head out to find you. As I stepped out, the guards closed the gates! I haven't been able to get back in since... Oh, here we go. Everybody back off! What ceremony? What kind of ceremony do you have to lock down the whole city? Feels We'll never find it. We'll just skip it and assume everything is fine. I think we broke in or something. Good enough for me. Now we'll go to a place. Do a thing. Or we'll just sit here. Fun. Yep. Uh, here we go. You're now free to enter Lowtown. All right. Now, where do I go? Lowtown. No, oh, that's it. Well, we did. We did a mission or two. I don't know. We did the opening, and we saw our king getting killed. We killed some guards. There's a tomato. We slaughtered a couple dogs, and we saw a beautiful city. Uh, guys, again. You know. Obviously, we didn't get too far in this one here today. A tough... Oh, that guy does look so cool. Tough night. We didn't get too far here today, but, you know, as as just sort of coming and checking out and seeing the game... I mean, I have to say, I am literally blown away by the visuals. I just really like them for some reason. Just really clicking with me. Um, you know, we, we didn't see too much of the gameplay, but I saw a tiny bit. And I have to say, that, you know, like, I've already sort of said my thoughts on this when I was experiencing it, but the gameplay is kind of interesting. I like that they're trying to mix it up and make Final Fantasy more action-y. Um, but if you're going to get that action-y, I almost want a bit more control over my character. Um, it's not terrible that they, that they don't. Um, but uh, that's just sort of, as I was playing, something I felt. I, it, there's just a kid sitting here by himself. Anyone Is this anyone's kid or kid by himself eh um yeah it it seems like a solid final fantasy sort of adventure from what i've seen i mean the environments look really amazing the combat and everything you know if you come from the final fantasy background and you just want something simple like that i mean it seems sort of you got sort of the turn-based mechanics and the building up of attacks and stuff so um yeah i don't know Se seems like a very serviceable final fantasy game i mean obviously if you have more experience playing this and you've gone much deeper in the game than, you know, the first 40 minutes, feel free to chime in and let me know what makes this game uh, amazing. But for our purposes, I think we had a little bit of fun here today. Um, I'm just looking at all the activity in the market and the scenes. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. The, <laughs> the funniest thing is the thing that pulled me in is less the gameplay and more the environment. And that is rare. Usually for me, I'm all about gameplay, but... They just, they, they did it, man. This is like the perfect sort of Star Wars-y, fantasy, aesthetically pleasing, palm trees in the background environment I've seen in a while. And I think I gotta go to a beach or something because yeah. 
Anyway, what do you guys think of Final Fantasy XII here? Is it a game that you've played? Do you love it? Does it have all sorts of amazing things? Let us know in the comments down below what makes this game so amazing. For my purposes here, I think it is uh, a fun little iteration on the Final Fantasy series. And it's interesting to see how they keep trying to modernize it and how the controls have advanced. Um, and it's gotten a little more action-y since the earliest days of Final Fantasy. Um, guys, uh, if you did enjoy the video, don't forget to like and all that stuff. And other than that, I will catch you in the next one. And, uh, yeah, I will see you then. Alrighty, guys. Peace.